Well, thanks very much, and thank you all for coming. Uh, as you know, uh, this movement uh, was invented about a year ago by uh, Jeff Mulgan and uh, Anthony Selden and myself. The first thing we had to do was to appoint a director, and we interviewed some wonderful candidates. Uh, one of them had gone into the web to see if there was any other organization with happiness in its name, and the answer had come back on his computer, your search for happiness has produced no results. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> we're hoping to do better than that. Uh, I, I, I will start with a story about, uh, this is a true story, about uh, the Bishop of Lincoln, a former one, um, who went uh, with my friend who was a civil servant to open a primary school classroom. And there were little children sitting on their little chairs. And here in the front were two little chairs for the Bishop and my friend. And the bishop started saying, uh, boys and girls, who can tell me what is gray and furry and lives in trees? And the children looked at each other in amazement. And then one little child put up his hand and he said, please, sir, I know the answer is meant to be Jesus, but isn't it a squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have to ask the right question. And, uh, I suppose the most important question that any of us could ask um, is uh, what should we be aiming to do in our lives? And our movement is offering a very simple answer. Uh, we should be aiming to create as much happiness as we can in the world around us uh, and as little misery. And it's really a, a very, very simple idea. But if everybody really believed it uh, and really tried to uh, act upon it, uh, we would, of course, uh, have a very much happier society. So I think this is an idea of great power, uh, and it's the aim of our movement to establish that idea as a centerpiece for world culture in the 21st century, not to put it uh, too uh, mildly. What does that mean in practical terms for people who join our, our movement? Two things. First, uh, we ask anyone who becomes a member uh, to make a pledge that they will try and produce as much happiness in the world uh, around them as they can and as little misery. But we don't want this pledge to be uh, a hair shirt, uh, nor do we want it to be done lightly. Uh, it's not a hair shirt because the new science of happiness shows clearly that people who care more about other people actually themselves become happier. Um, of course, it's not uh, at every moment in time comfortable to care about other people, we know that. But on balance, it's true that if you want to feel good, uh, do good. And in fact, the neuroscience that's come along in the last 10 years is very interesting. They put people in these uh, laboratories to play these games and they can cooperate or uh, not cooperate. And when they cooperate, they observe that their brains are active in the same reward centers as where they feel any other reward, uh, like eating chocolate. So uh, the first point of our movement is the pledge. But of course, it's much easier to do good things uh, together with other people, uh, which brings us to the second, and I would say the most important feature of our movement, which is that we will enable people to form Action for Happiness groups, thousands of them throughout the country and hopefully eventually around the world, uh, creating more happiness in whatever way the members of the group uh, think makes sense to them, given their interests, abilities, etc. And we know that there are millions of people out there uh, who feel that surely life could be better and that they've got a better self uh, that is trying to get out. And if they get together uh, with our help, with other like-minded people, they will be able to experience just that by doing something which increases the happiness of other people uh, and of themselves. And there are obviously hundreds of ways that groups can function. Uh, we have identified so far 50 different actions, uh, either through your home life, your work life, life in the community, or just in your own uh, inner workings of yourself, through which people uh, can create more happiness 
uh, in the world and less misery. And these are all evidence-based. They're on our website. The evidence is there. And practical suggestions and links to materials are also available. And Mark will talk about that. Now, you might say, what is new about this? And uh, I would say that uh, many of the things that we are urging have been part of ancient wisdom. People have constantly been talking about the need for less individualism, less self-interest, more of a culture based on what you can give than what you can get. What is new uh, is that we have the new science of happiness, which tells us much more uh, uh, precisely what actually uh, does determine happiness, what is good for happiness, what really matters, what is less important, and thus enables us to focus better on what the priorities should be. And of course, all these studies come up with the key factor for the happiness of the individual being the human relationships uh, which you're involved with and which we've neglected too much in pursuit of, of higher income and uh, individual self-interest. And that, of course, is why, as you saw, uh, in the film, happiness has not risen in the last 50 years, uh, and it also explains the, the differences between uh, cultures. There are cultures which are much happier than our own, ones in which the levels of trust between people are, are much happier than here, for example, uh, in Scandinavia. So we are calling for a change of priorities, but we are doing it not on the basis uh, of speculative philosophy, but on the basis of evidence. Uh, about what makes a difference, uh, and we're doing it on the basis of, of purely secular reasoning, which we think uh, is the most convincing in the 21st century. So that's what's the difference. But uh, do, we have, what, what, do we have a chance? <laughs> uh, are we actually going to be able to turn what has been, uh, I think it's true to say, up until pretty uh, nearly now, the rising tide of, of excessive individualism? Well, it's very important not to believe that cultural trends go on in the same direction forever. Uh, in the 18th century, you had increasing individualism. In the 19th century, uh, the return of uh, increasing social responsibility. And we think the time is right for a turning point now where we are here. There is a worldwide hunger for something better, uh, and we believe we can harness it. Um, so we've not been surprised that even before launching this movement, uh, we've had uh, 4,500 people approach us offering for help, coming from 60 countries. And the most amazing thing is that now, at this moment, uh, there are 4,000 hits per minute uh, on our website. If that doesn't show a hunger, uh, I don't know what else could. So I've talked mainly about the social aspect of the message, but of course there's a personal message as well. Because the other main factor affecting happiness is your own mental state and your mental health. And we can, each of us, learn better ways of managing our feelings. Uh, so we develop the positive side of our nature more strongly. And that's the other part of the movement's message. So uh, also on our website, uh, we have developed 10 keys to happier living based on evidence. Uh, and Mark will also talk about those. Uh, I just want to mention the last one, which is the need for meaning. Of course, uh, you can't be happy without feeling a part uh, of something bigger and a relation uh, between yourself and something bigger. And we hope that for some people at least, uh, that something bigger uh, will be action for happiness. So, I want to end by telling you um, the best thing that has happened to our movement so far, which is the appointment of Mark uh, Williamson as our director. Uh, he has uh, every talent that you could imagine, except uh, being able to keep awake for more than 24 hours a day. Uh, so I would like to thank Mark uh, and Vanessa, uh, who's somewhere here, uh, and the dozens of other people um, who've been working so hard uh, many of them for months to bring this movement into existence uh, and thank everybody else here who joined the movement uh, and all of you who are about to if you haven't already. Um, let me end with uh, H.L. Mencken's definition of Puritanism. Puritanism, the dreadful fear 
that someone, somewhere, may be happy. <laughs> we, we, we want everyone to be happy. Uh, and with your help, I'm sure we can help to build a happier society. Thank you very much. Thank you.